Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we are going to see the frequently asked manage managerial interview questions for the uh, you know IT professionals, right? So many a times uh, we have been sharing mock interviews. We have been sharing videos on technical round questions on questions that are asked in the uh, with respect to technology. Right. But now in this video, we will be focusing on the managerial round questions that are asked in the interview. Right. Managerial round plays a very vital role. See, if you are good technical enough, but if you are not able to answer the managerial level questions, then ultimately what would happen is you would get rejected. If your technical is good, but still you are not aware about the processes. You are not aware about the standards. You are not able to explain them what kind of methodology, what kind of process is being followed in your uh, team, in your project, in your current company, or or you know the situation based questions. What will you do if this happens? What will you do in, if this does not happen? So those kind of questions are generally asked in the managerial round. So. Basically, they want to know how much your understanding or how much, uh, you know, your analytical skills are running. Your, your mind is running with respect to the solutions whenever this kind of problem occurs, right? So we'll be looking at those questions. Also, I'll be answering those questions on a very high level so that you come to know what you need to answer in an interview. Okay. The very first question is tell me something about yourself. So whenever uh, you are asked this question, it might be a manager round. It might not be a manager round also because this question is, is very common, right? So don't start from directly saying from the very beginning, uh, I have done schooling from this. I have done college from this. This is my hobby. I am married. No one is interested in your personal details. No one is interested in your hobbies. No one is interested. What do you do on weekends? What they are interested is, they are more interested in what kind of uh, activities or work you do with respect to the job that you are looking for, right? So here, if you are looking for a testing job, right, then you can tell them in free time, you are just uh, doing freelance testing or you are just testing the applications. You're trying to find bugs, right? Rather than telling that I have got married, my wife is working at this particular place or I have two kids, until unless no, until unless they don't ask you the personal questions, don't answer them. That's it, simple, right? So, in the introduction to yourself, you can give a very good answer in explaining your how your day starts and what all the different activities do you do, right? So, I'll also come to the next question: roles and responsibilities. But you can summarize. You can tell what all activities you do in a nutshell. Let's say you start your day by reading the emails that you have got from the boss or from whichever emails mails you have got. So you'll be checking the inbox. You will be checking whether your pull request has been approved by your lead or manager or not, whether your test cases have been reviewed correctly or not, or have you received any feedback in the code or from the test case point of view that you will analyze. Then you will attend sync up, stand up meetings. Then you will attend grooming sessions. You will understand the requirements. You will brainstorm on those requirements with the development team. Then you will actually, um, you can do test case writing, you can do test case execution. Sometimes you can complete test case writing and then you can start with execution. Sometimes you are writing the automation scripts, you are developing the scripts to run. Sometimes you are uh, debugging the code, right? Sometimes you are uh, um, creating the test data so that whenever the story comes in testing, you are having the test data and you just have to run it through. So these are the various aspects that you have to tell with respect to the testing, with respect to yourself. So you have to show that you are made for testing, right? So that thing. And don't tell that I'm watching cricket in play time. No one is asking you all those things. In free time, what do you do? You might be uh, exploring some new concepts related to software testing. So those things you can tell, right? Next question is, roles and responsibilities. Now, when it comes to roles and responsibilities, so you have to tell them that uh, you are not a QA who is just bound to his role, right? For example, uh, your role is to write test case for story number one, two, three, four, any XYZ story. 
So you have written that test cases and you are done. No, it's not like that. You have to tell them that you also helped one of your team member in writing the test cases. You helped one of your team member in understand the, understanding the requirements. You assisted one of the developer in uh, reproducing the issue. You coordinated with the business analyst and helped them with a good suggestion, with a good user-friendly validation message, which was not there as a part of a user story. Your responsibilities are to write the test cases, execute them, to, if you are an automation tester, then you have to design scripts, you have to find the test case coverage, you have to make sure that uh, everything has been integrated with the DevOps and it is working up and fine. You are not just running your test from the local machine, you are using CICD tools and you have integrated those things. You have got your code reviewed, you have updated your code based on the uh, feedback that you have got in the pull request. So those are your roles and responsibilities. Sure. So if you are a QA, right? And if you tell, okay, you are helping someone, you are doing some, then people will automatically be impressed with your answer and they will start thinking of moving you to the next role. If you are a QA, they will think, no, can I hire him? Should I hire him as a senior QA? If you are a senior QA, they should feel, yeah, he's got a lead level uh, you know, the capacity, the capabilities. So in in each and every answer, you should, you know, send positive vibes. You should send a very, you know, uh, the vibes which the interviewer should come to know, yes, that this person is very knowledgeable and he is fit into this particular company or organization. Right. Okay. Next question is, will you be comfortable to work in any languages like JavaScript or Python? So generally, see what would happen if you are going for an automation testing job and if your resume says Java, 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 then they will ask you this question. Are you comfortable with Python? If you have written Python, then they will, they will ask you, are you comfortable with Java? So they want to know that uh, with how many languages you are comfortable with, right? So <clears throat> if you say, no so it's not like they won't hire you but you have to be transparent so you can tell see as of now i don't know python because i haven't got the opportunity to work but yes uh i'll, I'll explore i'll start exploring that language and maybe sooner and better i will be uh, having hands-on good ex hands-on experience also for that language right rather than saying complete no tell it's no plus uh, effort that you are thinking to put on that, right? Okay, then basic questions in DB. So sometimes uh, they I, they might ask database related questions related to SQL, right? So those things you can get. Okay, then this kind of situation based question also you can come if requirements are frequently changing, how do I approach? If requirements are frequently changing, so you will have to approach business analyst, project managers and you will have to update them. See, the requirement has got changed. So now you will have to update your test cases. You will have to revisit your test cases and then you will be able to execute the test cases. So uh, this is what the challenge that you are facing. So how will you approach? So you can tell them for now, can I test as per the new requirement and update the test cases later? It's not, I'm saying that after the release is done or after the product is live, but maybe you want to take the testing first because you want to find the bugs early. The more sooner you will be able to find the bugs, the more quicker the development team will fix and that cycle will be, you know, moving to the next phase. But if you update your test cases and you start executing them lately, then if you find a bug at the very last day, then it's again a risk. It's again a problem. So you can just tell them that, let me execute the test cases first, high level spoke test. Right. And then so approach you should keep is you should uh, update your test cases. I'll say update test scenarios, not the detailed level of test cases. Right. Update scenarios for now. And then you can test. And then once you are confident with the testing, update the test cases. In the meantime, the development team will fix the defects. Right. Now looking to this question from the automation testing point of view, requirements are frequently changing. Screens are frequently changing. So even the enhance, due to the enhancements, your XPath might get changed. So in your automation scope, what you will do? So you will have to use relative XPath. Don't use absolute XPath. 
you will have to collaborate with the development team and tell them that you need to be notified in advance when this kind of requirement changes are going to come so that proactively you can update your automation service right okay rca rtm related so this is again uh, root cause analysis requirement traceability metrics so how it has been followed do you have any rca template do you have uh, any process followed once the defect is coming from the client side then what happens are you fixing it immediately or you are creating a ticket after creating a ticket are you fixing it immediately or you are having a discussion with the client what if it's a straightforward fix what if it's a, actually a new requirement but it's actually a bug from the client perspective so what you will do is you will have a communication channel you will open a communication channel with them you will speak to them your point of view you will understand what is their point of view and then you will proceed for that right so these were few of the managerial round questions that are frequently asked in the interviews right hope you like this video and i have tried my level best to answer the questions you know the mentioned here but still if you feel um, something additional points should be added then feel free to put them in the comment section of this video right it might would have happened that i would have i would have forgotten that particular point but if you mention in the comment section people who are watching this video they will read your comments and they will incorporate your comment as a part of their answer in an interview so ultimately what would happen you would receive a blessings in disguise right so so help people uh you know spread positivity and uh, uh, keep watching our videos right so thank you so much for watching this uh, video and please share our YouTube channel in your network. Thank you.